Hey everybody, thanks for joining us out here again today on the VSO Gun Channel. We've got a brand new series for you guys starting right here, right now. This is Will It Drag. For our very first test, we have a Glock 26. This thing is new. I just picked it up from the FFL. Have not fired a single round through it. As you can see, Generation 4 Glock 26 right here. I've got five rounds of Prime Hexagon here. We're gonna go ahead and function test it real, really quick just so we know that it works before we do this. Works great. What we've got set up for our test here is we're basically gonna drag it behind my Ford F-150. We've gone ahead and secured a carabiner here to a strap and attached it to the tow package. The path consists of very fine dirt here, a gravel section up there, a sand pit that Bacon helped me set up earlier, and then a long field all the way from this spot at the front of the property back to the range. This is a totally non-scientific test. If you want a scientific test, go watch the Military Arms Channel. He does a good job. We don't do that crap here. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and stuff a clipazine in here, and Bacon's gonna go ahead and hook us up, make sure that we're ready to go. Okay guys, how we're gonna do this, so we're going to take our Glock 26, we're going to verify that it's empty, chamber's cold. Since Glock 26 mags are really expensive, we're going to use this ETS mag because the uh, magazine will probably disappear somewhere along this run. And they're kind of hard to find. How we're going to secure it is we're just going to take your standard climbing style carabiner, we're going to hook it through the trigger guard and lock it down so we don't lose our pistol either. The whole test will be conducted with the F-150 and we will be um, maintaining 25 miles per hour as we drag the pistol. Picking it up for pictures, people. Picking it straight up and moving it into the sun. Go ahead there, boss. Oh, I have to loosen the carabiner slightly just to not cast a shadow there. All right, boss. We're going to let Bacon take pictures. Um, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys when he's done. Okay, guys. We're down here at the range. Uh, we just drugged the Glock 26. We're going to go ahead, check it for bore obstruction, check out, see if we can see any physical damage, and then we'll move on to shooting it. So we'll go ahead and unsecure 
our carabiner. As you can see, magazine's missing. We'll lock the slide to the rear, insert our device. It came through cleanly. We see that there's no bore obstruction, so we're going to move on to the physical damage of this weapon. First thing of note is the rear sight is completely missing. Um, weak point of the Glock system, plastic sights on a metal slide don't last very long. Other than that, it just appears that there's cosmetic damage. There's a large chunk missing out of the trigger, a chunk missing out of the trigger guard, um, and various chunks missing out of the weapon itself. I don't see any cracks or anything that would denote uh, catastrophic damage. Basically, it just looks like we added 15 years of wear to this pistol in like 30 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and shoot this. So I'm going to get rid of my, my screwdriver and grab a stick -a -zine. So we're loaded up with Prime 124 grain uh, hexagon ammunition. No remedial action? Nothing. Double. What do we got? You double fed it, it was a failure to feed start out with. Alright man, well hey, uh, let's load up a second magazine, uh, and and uh, in the meantime we'll crack it open and look at it, see if there's anything that we're missing on it that could be causing it to do that. Okay guys, uh, due to the last magazine hanging up, uh, we went ahead and switched from the Prime Hexagon, which is kind of an open tip match type round, to the Prime 124 grain ball ammo, uh, just to see if, if that was the problem. So, I got a magazine right here. Definitely not the ammo. We had so many problems with this gun that we're just going to go ahead and see if we can get it to run. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Glock 26, we're going to lock it back, we're going to take our LPS 2, this is the heavy duty ver version, and just spray the piss out of it and display some of this stuff. Oh gosh, maybe it'll blow up because of the amount of crap that's in it all this stuff run out of it and uh hey we've proven that you cannot hydroglock a glock too because uh you know tim tim did that and uh he didn't he didn't have a problem with the glock hydrolocking when he dunked it at in the water so it should be fine right yeah oh it's totally dripping how's it feel uh, i bet it'll run well hey you know i tested it before we lubed it up and it didn't feel like it was like really gritty or anything. Well, here we go, guys. <laughs> There's the reliability that we're looking for. Oh, never mind. Last round. You got that Mega Prime? Mm hmm. Said so you got that Mega Prime? No, I can go get it real quick. You just entertain the camera. Is it still running? Yeah.
Magazine of Prime! <laughs> there it is, back to functionality. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. I feel like someone Bill Clinton touched. All right, Bacon. So uh, what's the verdict there, big guy? It's a little bit beat up, but... It'll drag. It'll drag. Once you once you get it lubed back up and get some of that stuff displaced from it, she'll run again. The, the big problem with the drag test, I think, is the fact that you're dragging it over the dirt and it just becomes powdered and gets caked on the internals. Well, that path right there at the front, that's where we drive all the heavy farm equipment. Like the, yeah. I mean, that's that dirt is like really, really fine grit. And that's the majority of what was in here. So yeah, when, when you pull back the slide and you look at the inside of the slide on these, on these guns, you'll see that these, when they're dry, are just absolutely caked in powder. Um, and I think that that's part of the... Uh, Part of the problem is it's just slowing down the slide a little bit. Yeah. Not but enough slide inertia to, to pick up the next round. Is that after right? you fill it full of, of LPS2, it runs like a rape tape. Well, um, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we'll clean this gun up. We'll put uh, another rear sight on it. Um, excess big sights, big dot sights, if you're watching, good opportunity. Need new sights for Glock 26. Just throwing that out there. And guys, if you guys have any a uh, particular gun that you guys would like to see us test, uh, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section down below, and we'll see if we can get a gun in to be drug. I mean, who knows? Doesn't hurt to ask. Doesn't hurt to ask, and uh, we'll see. Because uh, I'm, I'm confident that this gun, this gun did, in my opinion, yeah. I think it did better than expectations. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, a little bit beat up, but it did pass. My prediction? Is the next polygon that we drag is just going to shatter. You think? Yeah, I just, I just don't see anything. Like if the, if the Glock can make it through and have some some big nicks and cuts in it, I think somebody else's polymer is just going to be too too brittle. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a Gen 4. We were expecting. Uh, I was kind of expecting. I did. This used to be really flexible in the early Gen 4s. Well, on the 26. They've taken so much frame out of it that you're kind of up in the beefy part of what would be a 17 frame. Mm -hmm. And the stiffest part of the 17 frame, this is, you know, it's just a chopped up little gun. So, Well, final verdict, Glock 26. Will drag. Will drag. I know that this is this is post lube, um, but looking inside of this gun, it really didn't get too dirty. So um, who knows? 